in this session today, I'm going to be covering some of our core debugging features, such as conditional breakpoint, uh, breakpoint groups, default breakpoints, and visualizers, and external sources debugging. And because everyone is talking, talking about AI, I also have a couple AI features added here, which I'll be showing you as well. So before I start my demo, I actually have a question for you guys, more like a mom's joke here. So my question is, why was exception always invited to parties? Anyone? Can you always start yeah, close enough. <laughs> okay. So my answer was that exception is always invited to parties because it knows how to make a real impact when it shows up. Right? And if you ask me, I really hate when the exception shows up. They can be really tricky, time consuming, as well as troublesome if they are not handled correctly. But with Visual Studio, you have an additional assistant to resolve exceptions much easily and quickly. Let me show you an example. Okay. Okay. Here I am in the Visual Studio. I'm actually using a open source application called ShareX for my demo today. Uh, it's a screen capturing application. Already in a debug mode, I have a couple of breakpoints here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to continue here. The first thing I see is, is this exception helper. Now, looks like I haven't handled something, so I'm getting this exception here. In normal scenarios, what I'll do is I'll go back to code, try to figure out what's going on, or maybe go on the internet and try to see what system and valid operation exception is. But because now I have access to Copilot here, what I'm gonna do to speed up this process is to ask Copilot on this. As soon as I do this, you'll see in the chat window on the right, Copilot is trying to analyze this exception for me. Looks like in this scenario, it is asking me for more references. Also to remind that when I click the Ask Copilot on the first time, I am providing more references to it as well, such as more exception details, local variables, and source code. But some, in some scenarios, we might have to give additional details. Uh, looks like it's asking me to check the commands value in the locals window, so let's go do that. I don't have my locals window open. Okay. Or autos. So it looks like the command value is here is zero. So let's provide that to Copilot. With the more reference we give, it is actually analyzing it further and providing me with the code fix. Uh, I think I was calling an empty commands before I um, empty thing before I'm calling it. So it provided me with the code fix. I'm going to go ahead and apply that to my code and see if it fix. So oops. Can I dock it again? And if you see here, the copilot actually inserted that code within my uh, ID here and I have a button to accept or cancel. I'm going to go ahead and accept that. The changes are headed here. We are, uh, we are doing a null check before calling it now. Now I want to take your attention to uh, here as well. Actually, I am already in the debug mode. I already edited a code here. I'm not going to stop my debugging or anything. The only thing I'm going to do is continue. And I actually moved forward. I didn't have to do, uh, rebuild my code or anything. And that is because the hot reload actually worked in the background. And then the edit and continue work very seamlessly here. Now, it looks like I have fixed my exception, so let's go further here. When I was working around this application, I actually also noticed another error. Let's close this window here. And this one. Okay. I noticed another error that whenever I was trying to load this application, it wasn't loaded correctly. And it was throwing me an error for code not, uh, path not found. The weird thing is that that was it was only happening certain amount of time. It was only happening for certain instances, but not for all the instances. So I started my investigation here. I have ended up on this function call update personal path. Looks like here somewhere the path is set where the application is going to be loaded. Um, so my hypothesis is that okay. On this particular line 462, the path is set. But as I mentioned, the error is not happening every time. So I don't want my application to pause here every time. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna convert this breakpoint to a conditional breakpoint so I can control when this, uh, when this breakpoint will hit and when the application will pause here. 
So if you don't know, conditional breakpoints are really great if you wanted to check the state of your application in under different conditions. Sometimes coming up with those conditions can be tricky. And if you're like me, remember the syntax can be tricky as well. So we can actually ask Copilot again for a help here. Um, I'm going to click here on, uh, on this checkbox conditions. And as soon as, I, as soon as I click under this text box here, Copilot actually works in the background and provides me with these three possible expression suggestions, which might work in this conditional breakpoint scenario. Now I'm going to go ahead and select the second one here. Okay. Um, and if you see, you still have an ability to go ahead, edit the condition which you uh, added for the copilot, or you can still define your own. This also works great with actions or trace points. It can give you nice AI curated trace messages for your application status. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and go to the first one again. Now it looks like my breakpoint here is set to a conditional breakpoint as well as have an uh, log message for uh, which is helped, which is created with help of Copilot. Now, as we're talking about breakpoints here, I don't know about you, but when I'm debugging, specifically if I'm debugging multiple issues at the same time, I tend to have a lot of breakpoints. And then my breakpoint settings window it has this huge list, which is not very easy to navigate. But recently, I started using breakpoint groups. So if you see the window now, it looks much cleaner because I created a couple groups here. And now if I want to focus on certain area of debugging, I can actually disable the whole set of breakpoints in a single click. For example, I have this demo breakpoint group here, which I really need now. And I have this other set, which I really don't need right now. So I can just disable this whole in a single click. Now, creating a group is super easy. You can actually do that using this breakpoint group. And moving the breakpoint to a group is more easier. You can just select, drag and drop on the, in the, the breakpoint you want, a breakpoint group you want, and it will be added there. Now, another tip I have here is that you can actually mark any of the breakpoint group as default. So you can right click any group and say set as default. What it does is that after this, any of the breakpoints which are added will get automatically added to this breakpoint group. For example, I'm going to add another here in this demo, and you'll see it's automatically added here, which makes it more easier to work around breakpoint groups. Now, let's go further. Another area which I think is super uh, important when you're debugging is visualization, visualization of your data. Uh, for example, here in this particular function, looks like uh, it is setting, it is creating a list of things I can perform under this application. I, I wanted to see if I'm getting all the values correct. So instead of hovering over each of these variables, what I can do is I can hover over this object and use this uh, use this icon to, to get enumerable visualizer. Now, if you don't know, Visual Studio has many different types of debug visualizers to do visualize many different types of data, such as enumerable visualizer, data set visualizer, string, HTML, and JSON. And with the visualizers, you can actually filter your data, sort your data. You can even export the data if you want to and share with your teammates. And specifically with enumerable visualizer, you also have an option to uh, filter your data using a link query visualizer, link query. So I have a very small set here, but imagine if you have like thousands of rows, you can actually write your own link query and filter your data to do some custom filterization as well. The best part is this is a non-modal window, so you can still interact with the editor in the background. For example, I'm going to comment out the last part here, and I'm going to continue my debugging, and you will see the real-time change in your visualization. visualization. You can also use multiple visualizers at the same time. So have like a text visualizer and enumerable visualizers open for a complex visualization of data, and they should still completely work fine. So another area which I wanted to show you is something called uh, external sources debugging, which is a fun thing to do. OK. So as you know, when you are dealing with external source code or when you are dealing with um, 
non-user code, it's not always easy to find issues. Or when you, if you're dealing with any uh, issue which is referenced in third-party libraries, and if you don't have a very visibility on the source code, it is not very easy to find or investigate that particular issue. So where am I called stack going to go? Okay. Where is it? Yeah, here, here is it. For example, in the call stack window here, I'm seeing the call stack from my code. I think this one is like the my local code, but all of these call stack are from a third party library called JSON serialization, which I have, might have referenced somewhere here. So with the Visual Studio though, when you have an external source code, you it's very easy to debug the external source code uh, using certain tools such as the call stack or an auto decompilation and external sources node. For example, when I'm double clicking on this call stack, you will see Visual Studio auto decompiles the, the decompiled source for it and opens it in my editor so I can have a full visibility of the source code behind that. I can even, not just this, I can actually also see other reference code under this external sources node and actually browse through them if I need to, as if I'm browsing through my other files in the Solution Explorer. And you can actually place breakpoints to it. Not this file, but in general, you should be able to place a breakpoints to this and debug through them as if you're debugging your own code. So imagine a scenario that you uh, need to debug a code from your partner team because you're trying to investigate an issue. You can actually do that. You can debug it through it, pick, place a breakpoint, investigate, or even inspect the variables without even having access to their repos, without even uh, building their binaries. You're, you can just debug through them as if you're debugging through your own code. Now, the last thing I have, want to show you here, so let's, look, let's take a look back. Uh, we fixed an exception. We also tried to have like some steps around and bug. We looked at visualization, external sources, breakpoints. So I think I am going to go ahead and continue and see if my application now loads. So let's take a look. Okay, looks like I'm able to load my application. So we are able to fix the exception and the bug both. So I am going to try capturing and a screenshot here. Now, when I tried to capture the screenshot before, I remember that the screenshot wasn't looking very right. The height and the width was something off. Um, there was some crop section on the bottom of the screenshot. So I'm gonna try doing that again now. And yes, I remember placing a break, break point on the screenshot.cs to investigate that issue. Um, I was actually trying to look at the locals variable just before my demo. So, and I noticed that the bounds and the rec values here, if you see here in this locals, are a little off as well. The width is showing zero, which is not right, which should be the width of my screen, while the Y is showing the width of my screen, which is 1920. So again, in normal scenario, I'll go back to the code and try to investigate what's going on. I'll go our internet and try to see what's going on. But because I'm almost end of my demo, I'm gonna speed up the process using Ask Copilot again. So what I can do is I can ask Copilot about any variable values in my locals windows, autos windows, watch windows, or even in data tips. And Copilot will help me analyze those values again. It will tell me why I'm seeing this value particularly, which I'm seeing in the locals. Looks like in this case, it is asking me to go back and check the helper method, which is, um, which is actually defining this rec and bounds. So what I can do is I can double click the message in here. This will actually bring up a code search. If you don't know, this is again, a very handy tool to search anything in your code. And I'm gonna go ahead and go to a particular, oops, I chose the wrong one. Here, okay. Yes, that's right one. Okay. So I am going to go ahead and provide this more reference to Copilot. So Copilot is asking about that. What I can do is I can select it, 
copy it, and then hash reference to Copilot using hash. And if you see here, Copilot actually already took my selection here, pass it to it, and then it will help, with the help of more references, it will help analyze the bug. And, okay, looks like it's telling me that the, oops, I, this is not something I expected, but I'm using an open source library here, so that can happen sometimes. But what Copilot was telling me that I am actually using a wrong rectangular, rectangle uh, method here, and that was, it was providing me a correct solution. So, with, so the idea behind that is that you should be able to use Copilot in some handy, handy methods like this, so it can actually speed up your normal debugging uh, debugging features as well, or debugging processes as well. That's all I had today, to be very honest. I'm gonna go back to my presentation here. Okay, and so there were a lot of other things which I couldn't cover, but I have this list of features which are recent to uh, debugging and diagnostics, and I think will be also very helpful. So feel free to take a picture, and if you, have any suggestions and feedback, please give us uh, give that on developer community side. If you need more tips, we have a dedicated uh, Twitter account for Visual Studio Debugger called VS underscore debugger, where we update a lot of tips and the recent um, improvements. Also, I will be present with some of other debugging folks in the expert meet meetup today, so feel free to stop by for any questions. Um, there is another area which I did not cover is profiling because we have a full one hour, 15 minute session today at three. Our engineering lead, Nick, is going to give a talk on how you can use Visual Studio Profiler to improve your performance. So hope to see you all again there. At the end, don't forget to take the session survey. Thank you so much.